So of course this is uh, Black Magic Crafts YouTube channel where I get a lot of my inspiration and, and I noticed that in this particular video he came up with a pretty cool concept, uh, concept of a what's called a mage tower tile system where he builds two sections that can be stacked on top of each other by simply gluing together sheets of uh, white foam core uh, with the steps integrated into each sheet and then offset and then twisted and then glued together to make this stack. Um, so the concept was cool because in one part of my story, the uh, adventuring party uh, becomes um, trapped or yeah, trapped and, and captured and then they have to be held in what's called an oubliette, which is French for place for forgetting things. And uh, it's essentially a, a prison platform that you can't get out of because there's only one way in and one way out. And my idea was that this would be a good segue from the ground level or street level of the city that they were into the subterranean parts of the city uh, by putting them into some kind of a stacked tower situation. Uh, so this is me just kind of in my brain kind of thinking of what I thought that would look like um, and how that could work. Um, I know that with our uh, business we, we do receive like banners and, and big posters and stuff in giant packing tubes. And so I had a pretty hefty shipping tube. It was like five and a half inches across uh, by about 36 inches long. And you'll see that here in a minute. Um, so I said, okay, instead of stacking foam core on top of each other, which would require five, six, seven, eight, ten sheets for even just the first six to 10 inches, um, even though it's only a dollar a sheet, it's still a lot of work uh, to cut all those out, stack them, and there's a lot of dead space in that construction. Um, I said, why couldn't I do an entire sheet with the texture of the stone and then wrap it around the tube and use that as my mechanism for creating that texture in a cylindrical object um, and then add the steps separately um, because they can be glued on just as easily as they could be stacked together. So this is me kind of fleshing out um, that idea of, of having that happen and where the steps could go. Um, and I was thinking that my separate rooms could be, you know, one of those layers. And so I thought maybe there could be four layers of, you know, you know one foot at a time. Um, and that way the adventure party could descend down through this descending staircase and then enter the first room and you would remove that section. You'd have the interior and so on and so forth. Um, don't be afraid to kind of let the imagination turn into whatever it's going to turn into on the paper because rarely will you end up the same exact places where you start. Uh, this project has taken five or six different branches off of the decision tree um, as it's evolved and been executed because you, you think of things that you didn't in initially think of. Um, so even though I designed this and kind of spent quite some time drawing this out, uh, it really just was a really more of a starting point for where it ultimately ended up going. Um, so the other thing I knew that I couldn't do is I could not just stack the steps one on top of the other because it would require so many pieces to get just around one time and to get up five or six inches that it, it, I didn't want to do that. So I knew I needed some kind of spacer in between the steps to give myself less pieces to have to work on and a little more um, structural integrity. So this part is me looking up again, oubliette, and kind of, you know, getting some references with that concept. Um, and although the original concept and discussion of oubliette is a little bit different than a giant cylinder with a spiral staircase, here's a picture of it there. Um, I knew that the concept did exist. Um, and uh, this is me trying to look up photographs uh, of an oubliette. I know that there was mention of one in the movie, The Labyrinth. Um, with David Bowie, and here's me trying to find a picture of that. And you know, I you, sometimes you remember things wrong. So in my brain, I thought of it being in my head what it really was in the movie, and it's really different from that. So it, I didn't really find anything exactly what I was looking for. So I said, okay, well, maybe I can't find it. Um, so now here's me trying to figure out what the numbers and dimensions and the math is going to be. So there's the tube. Um, so it's about five and a half inches across. And so what I needed to know is how much surface area that is to see if one sheet will completely wrap 
around that cylindrical object. Um, and for that, you have to figure out the circumference of a circle. So now you have to reference back to your seventh grade or eighth grade math uh, class and try to remember how to do that. Of course, fortunately for us nowadays, you could simply just type in Google, how do I find the circumference of a circle? And it'll give you a, a page and a, a calculator and the whole shebang. So I knew that it was about five and a half inches around. So I knew that I needed to figure that out. I knew that it had to, I didn't know what the radius was because it was some formula had to do with the radius times a factor. So I said, okay, well, half of five and a half is uh, two and two and a quarter, two and three quarters. Yeah, there's me ham fistedly going to the math and just figuring out what the first beginnings of these calculations are. It's, you know, and again, stuff like this is it's really a starting point because ultimately it really didn't matter, but I needed to know if, in fact, it was possible for one sheet of the foam core to wrap around a five and a half inch diameter tube. Um, and if that was going to be possible, if there's overlap, perfect. So there's me looking up, you know, how to find this out, and there's the formula circumference equals two pi r, I think is what that says. And so I take the information, I plug in the information, I, I write it out. I like to write things out um, on paper and next to my drawings um, because it helps me have a collection of all of those thoughts and, and that process uh, immortalized on paper um, so that if I ever have to reference back to what I was thinking about as I was going through these steps of, of kind of discovery, um, I would have that all in front of me. Um, so, I'm, you know, I'm working out the the numbers and, and, and you know, having it figure out. So it's like 17, a little more than 17 and a quarter, which is good because I think the sheet was just 20 by 30. So that at that point, it let me know that it was possible. The other concern I had was whether or not you could actually do a wrap without it breaking or splitting or, you know, whether it would accept that curve um, as it was being glued up. Um, so it was me trying to figure out whether that was even something that I could do. Uh, so now I'm looking up, I'm not sure what I'm doing at this point. Again, it, 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 what you're really kind of trying to do is, is figure out what's possible. And a lot of this pre-planning is good because it allows you to at least say to yourself, okay, I have one dollar invested in a piece of foam core at this point. So, so far, this is telling me that what I can accomplish with one dollar is I can make a tower with a dollar and some, and the hot glue. Obviously, a, a pack of those things is a couple dollars. So, you kind of want to know how much into it you are. Um, and if there's, a, if there's an effective savings that way in being able to use a technique like this because you have a found material like the tube, I already had the tube, I didn't have to buy it. I already had one, I have several, but this was the widest one and I was worried that the foam core might split if I used one that was more narrow or smaller. Um, so I picked the largest one I could find. Um, and then this is me trying to figure out, I guess trying to just figure out what the total is, the total number of inches. Um, I think, what am I doing? I'm really not sure what I'm calculating here. 117, oh, it's me trying to get more specific with, and I don't know why I felt I needed to get more. It's 17.28 is a little more than 17 and a quarter. So this is me getting, it's, yeah, it's 132nd more than 17 and a quarter. Um, so this is me totally ADD on this whole situation, having to figure out, I don't know why I even needed to do that. But I guess I'm just trying to make sure that the inches will work um, when I actually go to cut the foam core. Um, and so again, now I'm checking up to make sure that these numbers will fit within what I have available in my material. Um, and then just know that that circle, which I'm drawing out, again, I'm just giving myself mental references because sometimes you forget things. You forget whether you've got the dimensions right or not. Um, and it's always good to kind of go back and just go over your information before you start building things. It helps you eliminate or reduce the amount of waste you have by really planning and going slow and being methodical um, and it's very therapeutic that way because you I really enjoy having as little waste in the material as possible and maximizing as much of it as I can so 
so I got myself a white poster board, um, which was great because I could draw, I could write a bunch of stuff on it and a, a bunch of dimensions on it, and it would all be permanent um, as I was doing this. So I took the I took the tube and I said, okay, this is what my real circle is going to be for the actual tower. And so I knew that there was a thickness to the white foam core. So I knew that had a thickness. So that would then create a, a difference in the actual diameter of the finished tower. I also knew that my ruler was a little bit bigger than an inch wide. And a typical mini is, or the, the grid system is a, at least an inch to an inch and a quarter. So I said, okay, how do I draw another circle around this? I said, okay, let me just do this. Let me just grab my ruler and just start scratching away at the poster board as I was moving a ruler and it's always going to be in the right spot. It can't be less than the width. No matter where you put it, it's always going to be that width. So this is an easy way to kind of do a, a, a consistent second circle around an object with a ruler or anything else that's a solid object this way that's the proper width of what you're Oop, it moved a little bit there, but that's okay. That was like the last part. Um, so now I have a pretty good circle that is wider than the than the tower um, and kind of gives me an idea of where the steps are going to be as just a, a visual reference to kind of see where I'll be at that point. Um, so now I'm, you know, again, I'm just kind of saying to myself, okay, now where would I, if I was going to draw out one step, where would I put it? And so I go in and I kind of look at that part there and I kind of see to myself all right uh, you know and, and again I'm not I'm not in a hurry I don't have a timeline I don't have a deadline um, because I don't really know what I'm doing because uh, I'm kind of winging it and kind of just taking the process of letting the pro process kind of be as organic as it can be um, and I just want to make sure that as I take through each of these steps it's possible for me to be able to know um, that things fit together and that's really the key is to have things is to have things fit together um, So now I'm gonna say okay, I'll take a line anywhere and then I'll make sure that the the inside diameter is at least an inch So that by the time you get to the outside you certainly have room to put some type of a miniature or object on that step I didn't want it to be so tight that you couldn't um, So I said all right, so let me just grab at least an inch and then let me figure out what the overlap's going to be and say okay so if I know what the overlap is what how is that going to work so I also then wanted here to figure out how many pieces I could get around this circle to see how many number of steps I would need um, and this was kind of when I started realizing that if I didn't put a spacer between the steps I was going to need like a, like a 1200 of these pieces to go up three feet uh, because they're only like an eighth of an inch thick uh, so I as I as I'm sorting this out in my head I'm saying okay that's that's a lot of work you know it's a lot of steps and really not necessary to have that many steps because you're not gonna touch each and every one of them as you go around so rep you know the visual representation of that staircase does not need to be like that um, so here I am, I'm, you know, kind of starting to figure out, okay, what would the shape of the step be um, and how would that work? So I said, all right, I'm going to start there. I'm going to give myself a little overlap between one and the next, just arbitrary, random. It doesn't have to be exacting. You know, there's no true other than making sure that it's at least wide enough for a miniature to be there. So I said, okay, I know it needs to be at least an inch. So I go another half inch, I think, beyond that. And so then I try to figure out where the center of the circle is, which I really kind of didn't do that very well. I should have made it X. I should have made a crosshair and then put the tube on top of the crosshair uh, to be more exact. But again, it, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the shape of this step is going to be fine no matter how you do it. Um, as long as it fits the radius of the tower, the shape and the, and the width is if as precise or as imprecise as you may be, it's not going to matter. It's not going to draw the eye away from the effect of seeing this visual staircase. In fact, it's probably even better that it's a little bit off because it, it's more realistic that it's not some precisely 
replicated part in, in in this giant number of pieces that are all used that way um, because if you have a little distortion in the shape that distortion kind of then allows the eye to see that it's not consistent as it might not be when you have stone and you're trying to work stone and you're never going to have two stones that are exactly the same no matter how good of a stone cutter you are um, so th this is me again just going through the process i'm writing down the dimensions as i do them I'm writing down what I'm doing as I'm doing it so that I can make sure that I have a reason for it so that when I start cutting these pieces, I know that there's going to be a proper overlap. There's going to be a proper amount of space between the next first step and the next step. Um, and so now I say, okay, now let me make sure that this measurement's going to work and make sure that this is, and I'm, in my head, I'm visualizing how are they going to play on this because you're creating a playable structure. You're creating a playable surface. Um, so again, I've got my dimensions, I've got my overlap. So I say, okay, so what I need to do is I need it to be here. So this is when I realize that it will not be up against that middle circle. And I need to account for the thickness of the foam. So what I first do is I draw an additional thickness of about an eighth of an inch on the outside of the circle. And then I draw another one on the inside of this arced piece. And that way I kind of erase my, my rather fat looking line down there in the bottom left hand corner so this is me making the second tile so that I know exactly where the second tile is going to be and so here's me drawing outside of that first line and realizing where the second tile is it needs to be further out because again there's a different thickness so now I mean this is me kind of sorting out will these things overlap will they look correct uh, what is the amount of overlap that I intend to have and how does that translate to the number of pieces that will go around this tower um, one layer at a time um, to get from one level to the next? So again, it, it's the, really, the, in my opinion, the slower you go in this part of the process, the faster it will be that later because the more preparation you take to these individual components, um, once I sorted this part out, this is really what takes the longest. But again, you make up for that as you go through this. So now me knowing that I can do an entire sheet, um, this is me going through the process of taking one entire sheet of white foam core uh, with both sides of the paper taken off. And this is me going through and creating an entire sheet of stones. And I'll speed this up, uh, certainly to make sure that you don't have to get stuck uh, watching this um, happen at a slow pace. Um, and it's just, it, to me, it's actually wonderful to be able to do this because you know that you're just going to sit down and put on a movie. I think we had a movie on or some, at some point or something. And you're just going to go to town. You're just going to sit there and for, I think, I, I think we watched an entire movie um, as I was doing this, and as I was working through this process of getting this entire foam piece done. Um, and there's no, <laughs> real fast way to do this. Um, I'm sure if you had a roller, uh, a texture roller, this might work well, uh, but I don't. I have what I had, which was a piece of super thin, eighth inch thick uh, plywood sheeting that I had as a straight edge I was using outside to build my workbench. I had an orange um, triangle square with an edge on it, and I had a couple of fold out tables. And so this was me just working it and, you know, and just, just, you know, being, you know, and I realized at this point also, this is something interesting in this texturing part of the project. Um, I realized at some point that I needed these to not be uniform uh, because again, it would be distracting to the eye, in my opinion, if everything was exactly the same. Uh, so I started making these uh, horizontal bands wider or thinner uh, without a lot of reason for that, maybe not quite parallel. Um, 
you know, give it a little bit of a, a, a thickness on one end and a thinness on the other so that it would, and I was thinking about the story and I was thinking about, you know, how did this tower come to be, you know, and, and how long would it have taken to create and, and how many different people might be working on it and, and sourcing the stone and, and doing the stone cutting and then placing the stones and overseeing the project. And certainly you could imagine over the course of this giant tower, which at the scale is one inch equals five feet. So it's 36 inches. So that's 36 times. It's like, you know, 200 feet. Yeah, uh, more than 200 feet. Um, it would have taken a really long time and multiple people would be in charge of this project. So there would be these layers, these stratospheric type layers of, of consistency in one aspect. And then another section would be only consistent in a different aspect based on the, the age of the project. So it's really, you, you kind of come up with and kind of think about the backstory of what you're building as you're doing it um, from the work that you're doing. Uh, at least that's, that's how this was for me. And I was thinking to myself, okay, you know, at this point in the build, we're more than halfway. Okay, it was a different person took over. It was a different era. You know, it was like 20 years later. Um, and so a, a different type of stone was used because they ran out of one type and they had to source it from another place. And, and so you, you kind of think about those things and, and, and it allows you to kind of backfill some of your, some of your written story and some of your, your writing and the content that you're needing to go with this work surface, this play surface, um, is coming out of the construction, the actual construction of the model, which I thought was really awesome uh, because you always worry that you're spending too much time building stuff and not enough time writing or too much time writing and not enough time building stuff and so as you're going through this and you're thinking about these things for the sake of the realism of the the model and the environment and the terrain that you're making it, it, it naturally lends itself to be able to um, give you that inspiration visually to give you kind of a mental inspiration on how you will be describing this, potentially describing this to your adventuring party uh, when they are going through your campaign. Um, so yeah, I, I think it, it took me, I think I, I did it in one day. I, obviously this is a straight shot, complete shot, um, uninterrupted. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I did it um, it, we were watching a movie and I did it. By the time I got to the end of the movie, I had the board done. So as I'm sitting there with my family and we're watching TV together, you know, I'm just moving the line and hitting the line and moving the line and hitting the line. Now, I'm not really that good at this. Um, that mechanical pencil was not, or I think it was a regular pencil, was not always giving me a good clean indentation and a cut, but I, I wasn't worried about it because I didn't expect that it was going to be perfect because it's the first time I've ever done it. You know, I have the least amount of knowledge about how to build an entire foam core board into a wall of stones on this project because it's the first time. So now this is me going through and just drawing bricks. Not really stone, really. It's not really bricks. Um, and this is just a, literally a grind. This is an absolute grind. Cause there's no fast way to do this. There, there is, there are no shortcuts, um, and so th this part of it is just um, again, it's just one of those things where you're just okay. I have to do this. There's no way around doing it. I've chosen this path, and there's no turning back now. So as you can see, this is. You know, it is what it is. Um, but again, it still also gives you the opportunity at some point to start thinking about, okay, what is the story of this tower and, and its construction and, and how are these things laid out and how can I make this somewhat interesting with the variations of my pencil marks, which will be visually re represented as individual stones on the side of this tower. Um, so you can see that some, you know, a lot of the bands are narrower or thicker than others. Uh, so you just give yourself a way of not 
deliberately not making the same pattern um, on each band and making sure that you have um, some randomness to it. Um, I am, I, I really had, it's been a long time since I've enjoyed a craft project, you know, and you don't get to really do them that often when you get older, but doing this kind of takes me all the way back to the beginning, you know, back when, you know, I was in the seventh grade, um, my parents had gotten divorced. My mom had gotten remarried. I had braces. I had glasses. I was a geeky kid. I was in the AV club. We moved to a new town. I didn't know anybody. And I was hanging out with all the geeky kids. And so D&D &D was, was really a godsend for me because it gave me the ability to, to, to even in my mind, if not in real life, rewrite my own story. Read my, my, my backstory, you know, you, you become whatever it is you want to become. And, you know, for many people who are, who are handling stressful things in their life without any tools or resources to be able to do so, having the ability to have a safe space for the, your imagination and have a safe space for your creativity where there is no uh, ridicule and there's 100% acceptance and you're, you know, you're operating within a, a, a made-up place of other misfit toys um, is, is v extremely helpful in coping with life and in coping with things that just would otherwise make you a little loopy um, if you didn't have something, whether it be physical exercise or whether it be writing or it be painting or Dungeons and Dragons, whatever it is, um, having an outlet and having something that you can just detach from things and, and just say, okay, I'm just going to spend time doing this one thing. I'm not going to pick up the phone. I'm not texting. I'm not on Facebook. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm just doing this. And, and I am laboring to produce. And as you can see, it's now moving at a good clip. I mean, of course, I've got the the footage sped up double time, but it's starting to look like something. And this is the to me, this is the most fun part of the process. Is is that, okay? You've decided that you're going to use a method. You've decided how you're going to do it and how you're going to execute it, and you start doing the work. And once you start doing the work, it start. At first, it didn't look like anything. When we were first looking at this, it was just a bunch of lines. Now it's starting to actually look like something. And, and it's, and even though I'm still at the same pace I was at the beginning, it doesn't feel that way because now the, the, the motivation to move on into a kind of an automated process here is really being, it's being pushed through by the work itself. Um, and this is very true for a lot of things in life. And, and so I would tell you, go spend a dollar, get yourself a pencil and a ruler or a stick or something like this and just do this. So in the next video, we're going to show you or I'm going to show you how we then start to suss out how this panel will work with the tube and how we're going to dissect that tube. And it's kind of where I start figuring out the logistics of making this work. Um, again, I'm super excited for this project and uh, for you to be able to see the progress that we're making up to this point. Um, there's a lot of footage to go through and so I have quite a few of these videos that I got to kind of get through. Um, and I'll, I'm doing the best I can to get the uh, raw footage um, pared down to just the good stuff and make sure that it all makes sense and that it's all chronological and then I basically I got to sit and describe what I was thinking in my thought process while I was doing it later or after the fact so um, you know the next video coming up is going to be um, starting to get this tube uh, covered with this particular sheet and um, I think it should be pretty exciting I want to thank you very much for uh, watching this video and um, I can't wait to see you in just a few minutes